this chat connects. Oh, wait, let me make sure I'm on my data. You know what? I realize I might be on. Uh, oh, we got a few people here. Oh, Jerry, good evening, Jerry. Oh, Will, you, you're one. Will's first. Hey, expensive cardboard. Uh, there might be, it might be a lot more newer uh, comics tonight. Not 100% sure. I have to get through all my hauls to clean up, and then I will, um, hey, Tina. Once I get through all my hauls, I, I'm going to do some sh nights where it's just silver, just bronze, and just gold. All right, hold up. I want to make sure I'm on. Hello, my YouTube friend, Pop Comics here, and we're back with another pile of stuff. Okay, let's get to this. You know what I'm really enjoying about these live streams each night is um, we get to have conversations, and then based on those conversations, the, it'll form what I do. So I actually brought a couple of things I've read recently that I absolutely loved. So we'll go through those in a little bit, but let's start with the haul, and then uh, once the crowd gets here, we can talk about some stuff. Uh, I also, I, it's a fun, I want to talk about my sales in the store today. I just wanted to show you guys kind of an interesting day. And, uh, oh, I also, I found two boxes from Japan that I forgot I had. So there's going to be some random Ziggy stuff today too. Hey, Brad, my voice is still kind of, uh, I know, Will, I just, I'm doing so much and my sleep is, uh, changing again too. So I'm kind of messed up right now. I literally just woke up. All right, and I'm still well. I'm still trying to think how much I want to pay because a lot of the uh, the you know the, like the photograph covers I have they're not as exciting for me, so I'm not quite sure what I want to pay on those. So I'm still kind of thinking about it. Right, well, I'll get you an answer as soon as possible. <laughs> okay, we're gonna start with this uh, things from another world package. And do I have a total? I paid one hundred forty-five dollars for this box. So we'll go through this box and then we can start talking about some stuff. I just want to start the video off with stuff to look at. Okay, let's see what we got. We got some Poison Ivy. I guess I've been in a Poison Ivy mood lately. I keep buying all the different variants and stuff. Yeah, I'm going to put this to the side. Okay, let's see what we got. We have... <laughs> uh, well, I definitely want all of them. So I'm definitely your buyer. I just have to figure. You got to let me know if there's a price you want, too, because that might make it easier for me. Uh, let's see. Poison Ivy, number six. So this was a 1 in 25 variant. I paid 15 bucks for that. Hey, card Imperial. So, yeah, it looks like I've been in a Poison Ivy movie. I think this is the third night where I've had some of the modern Poison Ivy stuff. And so far, I haven't bought duplicates, surprisingly. <laughs> Okay, this is the low take cover. So this one was a uh, one in twenty five, number five. This one was fifteen bucks. Absolutely love these covers though; they are gorgeous. Okay, and then this one was a was a one in twenty five. This was a Nick Robles cover, and this one was also fifteen bucks. Fifteen bucks. Hey, Jason, man, that's a gorgeous cover too. Okay, then we have Poison Ivy number one. And this was a 1 in 25. I paid 50 for that. So I guess I grabbed all the 1 in 25s they had for 15. Uh, then we have Harley Quinn 22. Gorgeous cover. Uh, this one was 15 bucks. So I guess I was just grabbing all the 1 in 25s that I wanted. Uh, Harley Quinn number 21 in 25. This one was $15. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you just like your body destroyed right now? That's crazy. Uh, okay, Vampirella, Dracula Unholy, number five, awesome Rose Besh cover. This one was only two bucks. Two dollars for a beautiful Rose Besh. Uh, Punchline, the Gotham game, number three. That one was four forty nine. dollars uh, Okay, don't tell me anything. Don't tell me anything. Don't tell me anything. I really need to see it. My, my sleep schedule is, like, changing now. I literally just woke up, and so, I, like, the next few days is going to be difficult because I'm going to want to stream at this time. And I don't know if I'm gonna be up or not. All right, Poison Ivy number seven. This one was just three fifty nine. So this was just an A cover, I believe, or a B cover. A uh, Poison Ivy number six, a beautiful Jenny Freezing cover. That was two bucks. Poison Ivy number five was two dollars. So I was just filling in the regular covers a bit. Uh, number four was two dollars. Gorgeous cover. A uh, really awesome Peach Momoko Spider Man and Moon Girl cover. 
Uh, this one was two bucks. Oh, you, okay. <laughs> okay, well, yeah, no, I, I'm definitely, I want it, I want it. It's not that I'm not going to buy it. I just, been, my schedule is all messed up. I haven't had time to think about it. Um, okay, let's see more. Well, there's a lot of Silver Age, too. No worries, Trezvic. Well, there's a lot of Silver Age, too. So the Silver Age is like, it's a little bit harder to uh, decide why I want to pay on that stuff because it's kind of a cheaper, cheaper stuff. Uh, Marauders number eight. Hey, Pippo Comics, no, 239. So grabbing some peach I needed. Oh, that cover is cute. Uh, Holly Quinn animated series number two. That one was 359. So I was just grabbing some recent releases when I grabbed these. Uh, Harley Quinn, the animated... Oh, no, Harley Quinn Annual. Uh, oh, that's a 1 in 25. That was fourteen ninety nine. That's awesome. Uh, Harley Quinn 23, the lyrics cover. I love this cover. This one was uh, just the regular cover. Two bucks. Two bucks. Hey, Funko... Funk Comics 814. I want to say Funko, but Funk Comics. Funk Comics. How are you? Uh, Harley Quinn number 19. Two bucks. Another awesome cover. Derek Chu. Uh, Draculina, number four. Rose Besh cover for two bucks. That is awesome. Uh, Judgment Day. Uh, this one was $4 for a Momoko cover. I think I actually got this one again. But $4 is a good price because cover is six. And then, uh, this awesome Ant-Man was two bucks. Awesome Peach Momoko cover. So, yeah, that was really sweet. Really nice little, uh, things for another world haul. Okay. You guys want to see my store sales for the day? I, it wasn't a lot. I sold, uh, I think, about 280. So this is my store sales for the day. I just, this is what I have to deal with sometimes in my shop. I only sold, oh, hey, Reed. only sold uh, about $280 today. So it was a slow day in the shop. But I want to show you something. Beanie Baby, $7. Funko Pop, $11. Random Toy, $2. Comics, $3. Two Pops, $17. Another Beanie Baby, $7. A record, $7. Seven Funko Pops, $105. A shirt and a pack of cards, $22. I only sold $3 for the comics in the shop today. I sold $15 in Beanie Babies. So what do I do? Do I stock up on more Beanie Babies? <laughs> like, to me, that's crazy. A day that the Beanie Babies are the second best-selling thing in the shop. And the Funko Pops are still half my sales of the day. Like, right now, I'm struggling. I don't know what to sell in the shop because, like, some days Funko pops just die and other days it's half my sales although it's a slow day in general and then comics like some days i'll have a guy come in and drop 300 dollars, but then there's days like today where i sell nothing because i don't really sell new comic books i just sell you know back issues and whatnot so the collectible market is very finicky it's hard to kind of figure but it's, it just i had to show you guys because it was crazy to me i sh sold almost 15 dollars worth of beanie babies and that was like the second category of the day. It beat records. It beat comics. It beat uh, trading card packs, which are usually one of my top two or three sellers. It beat everything except for Funko Pops. Oh, my gosh. That's just, it's funny. <laughs> All right. Okay, let's go through some um, uh, some more stuff. I got a lot of comics. Honestly, I still have enough to um, uh, probably do a live stream every day. Oh, if previous page. I mean, we can look at a previous page if you're curious. I don't know. Some days it's like one to two hundred. Other days it's seven, eight hundred. It's really it depends on the weather and uh, yeah, like Tuesday was twenty eight dollars because we only opened for an hour for whatnot. Um, yeah, I'm not a con. Well, I am for myself. Uh, Wednesday, yeah, not again. It was probably another like two or three hundred all a day. Which Wednesday was pops, pops. Uh, Magic and Pokemon cards. That's normal. Normally, I have these like a little forty dollar pop. Another comic for seven dollars. Uh, this guy bought comics and other things, so this was probably a bigger comic sale. Uh, pop and a comic. So this day was like a seventy five dollar comic day. Pokemon card, couple records, and pops. <laughs> that just gives you an idea. During the week, it might be like two to three hundred dollars right now, which is kind of slow. Uh, on the weekend, we might get up to 2000 on a good day. A weaker day, it might be like 700 Uh Okay, I do have two packages from Japan. We'll open those up later. We'll do comics. We're a comic channel. Let's do comics. Uh, all right, I got to... All right, we'll just... We'll have, I have uh, this right here. This is from um, 
Genghis Sean, he's really nice. Every time I pop in a room now, he says hello. But he says, love your content on YouTube. Thank you so much for the support. Gotta look out for a fellow Besh and Momoko fan. So I think I actually bought a bunch of really awesome Rose Besh and Peach Momoko stuff from him. And maybe a few other things. I see a few other things mixed in here. Okay, let's see if I can figure out what I paid on all this. Uh... I say it's a punchline connecting set. This one says I paid 30, although I don't see the second one. So there's a second one of that. Uh, we have this awesome Psylocke cover. Um, uh, Kale New. And I uh, don't see a price on this. Uh, so this, I think this is, uh, oh, oh, that was the lot. Okay, so that lot was 30, which are really cool. I love those two. Um, and then that one maybe went with the same lot. Not 100% sure. Uh, okay, these are the cool ones. These ones are expensive, though. I think I paid... Uh, no, actually, this one I only paid 30 bucks for. So this beautiful, beautiful... This is the third one I've showed in two nights. But this one is signed by Rose Besh. That one is super, super dope. So I got that one. And then I got... Uh, oh, Genghis Sean added his little sticker there. This one was a, uh, yeah, this one is also signed by Rose Besh. And this one was 20 bucks, I think. Yeah, that one's awesome. 20 bucks for a signed book. I'll take it. Hey, DJ Jockey. Um, let's see. And then we have another Rose Besh, just a virgin variant. And uh, I don't think that one was signed. That one, I think, was 20 Twenty dollars, I want to say. I can't really tell because it doesn't say. Oh wait, number three. Let me see. Number three. No, this one was forty bucks. I don't remember if it was by itself or with two though. That one's awesome though. And then I got the uh, Vampirella now. The Vampirella. Um, that one's also signed by Rose Besh. Love that one. That one's awesome. And then I have the uh, the Spider Man one. Uh, that one was. 30 signed by Rose Bash. I love Rose Bash. So getting a whole bunch of these signed for like 20 to 30 bucks is amazing. And then, uh, oh, and I won the giveaway that night. So this was a, um, just a Ninja Funk. I think it was a pretty limited print run. And, uh, it's signed by like everyone that worked on it. And, uh, oh, and then what was this one? It says number six, number six, number six. Uh, this one I paid sixty dollars for. It is a, um, you know, it's a Ninja Funk. I know some people don't like Ninja Funk. I love David Nakayama covers. This one was a listening party exclusive, so you had to go to one of the events limited to fifty. So getting a limited to fifty David Nakayama card or uh, comic, I was thinking, you know what, I'm gonna pay for that. So I paid sixty. I paid up for that one because you don't get stuff like that that often. Uh, I mean, I do have, I think, one or two new kids on the block dolls left. <laughs> uh, and, you know, I have all kinds. I just, I love pop culture. Anything from music to comics to... All right, so that actually was a really awesome batch of books. I think those are amazing. Um, okay, I'm going to open up one box from Japan. Hey, KG. Uh, oh, I don't have a scissor on me. Jeez, I'm not prepared. Okay, give me one second. I'm going to... Uh... Eric, I do have something beautiful to show you. Leave on the screen for you guys. I'll go around and get a scissor. Uh, here, we can, you can look at the weird... I have this little stack next to me. It just, it's hanging out. There we go. Weird science. <laughs> Let me go get a scissor. I'll be right back. Give me two seconds. Oh, there you go. I found a knife. <clears throat> Okay, I found my knife. It's actually right where it's supposed to be. Okay, let's get this open. Get that open. Okay, okay so just like normal. They package everything up in here uh, in envelopes, so it's always well packaged. They do such a good job. I use Buy E for that. 
I know it's super duper dope. I was just saying last night how I absolutely love EC Comics for the covers, but I can't read them. They're so, it's like a novel inside. Half the text is just, I mean, half the images are text. My dyslexia just goes crazy with that kind of stuff. Yeah, I gotta show you again. <laughs> Let's see how it, yeah. Like here, like half the time, there's just so many long, long word bubbles and descriptions. And they basically sometimes just describe what the image is. So I feel like, like, I don't want to read it right now, but it's so hard for me to read this stuff. It's so like some of these panels, half the panel is text. It's insane, but I absolutely love the artwork. The artwork is gorgeous. Yeah, cool comics. Okay, I'm going to move those. Or actually, I'll leave that there for you guys that are fans of that. While I go through my silly Japanese Ziggy stuff. Yeah, they're very, very dialogue heavy. And a lot of times they're just describing what's in the scene. Where it's just like, it'll be an alien doing something. And they'll be like, there's a blue alien doing that thing that you see on the screen. And he is doing it. And they'll just like, describe it four times over. <laughs> but yeah, I have a, because of my dyslexia, it's just like, I don't have enjoyment reading that. Because it's over the top word. It's for people that really like to read. But also kind of like comics. Alright, this is... Uh, I'm having a hard time opening this. Because someone asked me... Um, oh, you couldn't? Alright. That, that stinks. Next time. Uh, okay, so this package had a little note. It's a thank you note. I don't know. I can't read the Japanese. But I'm sure it's a lovely note. With a cute little Ziggy. And then uh, we have a Ziggy... Have a rainbow day, little kid's purse. <laughs> I love that stuff. I think it's so cute. Yeah, Jason, when he was back uh, home, at hometown, he um, he remembers, like, years ago, they had a really cool collection of all the hardcovers. So he's going to see if they still had them. But uh, sounds like someone either took them or they are no longer there. Okay, so the second item inside this box was... Uh, oh, more Ziggy bags. I've, oh, wow. I know, word salads are hard to read. So just a couple of Ziggy bags. I actually think I got the same exact bags in that one haul I did a couple weeks ago. So that's a duplicate. I just, I never see these bags because this stuff was tossed back in the day. And then, okay, a couple more items then I'll get back to comics. All right. Oh, so they were just kind of buried away. No one's asked for them in a while. Uh, Tina would have to do Mortal Kombat to get that from me. <laughs> my Ziggy stuff, that's the one thing I don't plan on selling. I'm gonna, I don't know what's gonna happen to my Ziggy stuff. Like the comics, when I'm 60, I'm probably gonna try to sell them to pay for my retirement. But Ziggy, I just don't know. That's, uh, I'm hoping to donate it to a museum or something. Which one? The, uh, the EC books? The originals are expensive, but awesome. Ah, so you you had that. I know how you're feeling. I did that too when I was going to NYU. When I was done with NYU, like I wanted to just walk in like I used to, but I was afraid that they would like, you know, card me or do something and get in trouble. So I actually didn't. I, I've been in that same exact situation. Oh, uh, Zot. Zot's, um, did Robert Crumb work on Zot? That's one of those fun early indie stuff. I love that stuff. I mean, it's over the top kind of a little bit too much sometimes, but. Uh, so we have a fun little postcard book. This is cool. And, oh yeah, there's like little teeny postcards throughout it. Oh yeah, this is super neat. Alright, I love that kind of stuff. That stuff is amazing to me. Okay, and then we have one more item. Uh, yeah, the originals are going to be super expensive. These are the big color reprints. I kind of want to start collecting those because they're just big and colorful. But yeah, even reprints are kind of... Uh, Funko Pops are not comics in the 90s or Beanie Babies because they're... Um... Oh, so, oh, Scott, you're right. Scott McCloud is not. Uh, Beanie Babies, they were mass produced. As in each Beanie Baby, there's only 200 something different Beanie Babies. And each one they made 100, 200, 500,000 of. So Beanie Babies are super common. common whereas uh, most Funko Pops are less than 10,000. So Funko Pops are rare and they're based on pop culture. So people that... Um, 
uh, people that, um, you know, the Funko Pops, there's always going to be someone who likes Michael Jordan, so there'll be always be someone who'll buy a Michael Jordan Funko Pop. There's always going to be someone who likes Guardians of the Galaxy, so there will be always someone who will buy a Guardians of the Galaxy Funko Pop. There's not always someone who wants a little plushy dog or a little plushy Princess Diana bear. So that's there's a huge difference between Beanie Baby. I'm, and I just showed, I literally sold $15 worth of Beanie Babies today and $3 worth of comics. So for my shop, Beanie Babies sometimes outsell comics. <laughs> and I have Golden Age, Silver Age. Like, I have some decent comics in the shop right now. It's not like I have no comics. Awesome. All right, I'm taking forever. I got this little pack of erasers and stuff. So this three uh, Ziggy eraser things, I think they, yeah, they open up and there's like a little eraser in here. Maybe I could use Ziggy to um, dry clean some comics <laughs> or not because these are rare. They're from the 70s. Uh, oh, that was that one sealed? No, did I just break the seal on that? No. Oh, I hope I didn't just break the seal on that. <laughs> All right, don't tell me. Don't tell me. I'm dying to see it. Dying to see it. I don't want to be spoiled. I want, I want you to tell me it's awful so when I go in, I have no expectations. <laughs> no, it is awful. The new movie's awful. Go see it anyway. <laughs> I don't want to see it. I mean, I want to see it. I'm just so busy. So busy. Okay. Uh, I don't know. I don't like what Funko's doing right now. and They're a big corporation now, so I don't think they can continue to do um, the way they used to because they need to make more and more profits all the time. And I don't like when corporations like that, they have to start cutting corners and do like really shitty things. So I have no confidence in Funko right now. Okay, so uh, last night we had a discussion. Someone asked me, like, how do I plan on reading all 100,000 books and I was saying that I tend to not read com I cut comics because I love the beautiful artwork. And I, um, so I just, I'm not planning on reading all of them because I was saying stuff like this. But the stuff I do read is something like this. I absolutely love this manga. It's uh, Miss Koizumi Loves Ramen Noodles. Now, this book, who I love, the character, she's definitely someone on the spectrum because she doesn't really want to deal with people. She's kind of like in her own world most of the time. But she absolutely loves ramen. She's like an expert in ramen. And, uh, like, every time someone wants to, like, hang out with her, like, eh, she people do hang out with her, but, like, not at her choice, kind of. <laughs> but, uh, like, they always love the ramen. And she, like, she's an expert in it. And I absolutely... So what I love about the storyline is, like, most... Uh, Japanese manga, it's all based on, like, the storytelling is done in the words, right? There's just a couple of words. It's like, there's a beautiful bowl of ramen, and it says, here you go. So it's very simple. You don't, it's not like a big, long, you know, 10 pages of text telling me about the ramen. It just shows a beautiful bowl of ramen. And she says, thank you. So she, in Japanese, she's saying, Ida dakimasu. She, she snaps the chopsticks, very simple, and then she starts to eat. Um, yeah, NFT. So it just it's a very simple storyline. It's really cute. And then the best part of the story, like, like that's her waiting in line for some ramen. And, uh, you know, with manga, it's all... But what I love about it is it starts having, you know, scenes where it has the, like, manga action lines... Of people eating ramen. Like, she's attacking that bowl of ramen. Like, look at this scene. This scene is epic. It's like, she's attacking, as if it's like a Dragon Ball Z storyline. She's attacking the bowl of ramen. And it, to me, it's like, this is amazing. It's a beautiful storytelling, and there's barely any words. And then at the end, she just absolutely loved that bowl. It's like one of the best bowls of ramen ever. And then, like, this person who doesn't understand the ramen thing yet, she's like... What, what was that? <laughs> she just went crazy with that bowl of ramen. So, like, I love this kind of stuff. I just, like, to me, this is the stuff I like to read because it's just, it's very simple and it's beautifully done and the storytelling is done within the pictures and then the words just highlight it and make it better. That's why, I like, I don't want a, a story that happens to have a picture with it. I want a picture that has a story that happens to have some words with it. So, on a, the same... uh uh, this one has three volumes. I hope they do more because I went through it really fast. And then another one I love. So this is a 1970s classic manga. This is The Drifting Classroom. And same exact thing. It is absolutely stunning. Here, wait. I got to move this. The uh, the art style on this is gorgeous. The line work. Like, 
here's just a scene with trees. So instead of having a big long paragraph about how the trees are beautiful, it just beautifully drawn trees. And it just says the trees. That's all they did. And then the weeds. And then they never died no matter how much I walked on them. So just the story of this kid walking to school. And then I love the scene. He walks by this toy store right here. And it's this window filled with like 1970s uh, kaiju and robots and stuff. And this is gorgeous. I Absolutely. So he wants to buy um, the toy. And he gets into like a huge... Like this is on his way to school. Uh, I think he... I don't remember if it's at the beginning. Or... Oh, yeah, look at that opening page, too. It's just the clouds. The clouds in the sky. And it's just, like, it's gorgeous. So, he, it's this story. He He's, like, going to work. I mean, like, he's going to school. Uh, he buys something for someone, and it gets destroyed. He's, like, absolutely upset about it. So, he's having, like, the worst day. Look at this, okay? Simple, simple. Streetlights. Vroom. He dropped his toy. All right, in the panel before, he dropped his toy or whatever it was that he bought. So he dropped it while he's running. He's rushing. He drops it. He's like, oh, crap. I dropped it. And then, like, the light changes. Vroom. He's like, stop. Don't run over it. Wait. Crack. Roar. Like, look at the action of that car. Just zooming past it. Uh, yeah, it's all. It's red. It's red that direction. And it's, and it's red that direction. So you read that corner down. So it's like, ah, idiot kid so the car is like yelling at him because he almost got killed his thing was completely destroyed oh you know what it was it was a new watch he bought for his mom he's trying to do something really nice uh so yeah he's like he's having the worst day ever and then that's his school at night this reminds me of my night walks actually it looks gorgeous and like look at the moon look how gorgeous this is like i love the illustrations in this everything is very simple the story is told like this panel right now this panel just says nighttime, uh, it's dark, it's a little bit creepy. This panel says it's the moon is out, it's beautiful. And it's just like, you can really just tell the storyline without the words. And then the words, like you could read this in Japanese without reading it. And then, uh, so he, there's his mom. His mom is drawn super cute. I love the way the mom is drawn. And um, so the next day it's at school. Like, look, like, look how gorgeous he, he's just in bed, just hanging out. He's at his desk and like, that's him waking up. Like, you don't need to explain this moment. We're all humans. We know that moment when we have to wake up and like, we're just like barely conscious. And we're just trying to figure out what's going on. We get up and then he realizes his alarm didn't go off. Stupid alarm clock. It didn't go off. I'm late again. Oh no. Then the action begins. And then, uh, so, like, this whole epic morning, he's going crazy trying to figure out everything he has to do to get to school. He has a big fight with his mom. His mom is, like, really pissed at him. She yells at him. You know, here's, she's calling her kid an idiot. Oh, no, no, the kid is calling her, his mom an idiot. He's like, idiot! Like, they're having, like, this god-awful argument. It's, like, the worst morning. So, this kid is having the worst time. So, it leaves off. He runs away. I mean, he's running the school in a bad mood. His mom's pissed off. He's pissed off. Uh, and, like, he calls his mom a witch. You witch! We, you know, we've all been there, you know, when we're really angry as a kid. And so, uh, uh, so yeah. And look at, like, every action panel. It's like the lines show how fast he's running out, getting away from his mom. And then that door slamming, bam! Like, there's so much action right there. And then he uh, he had a gift for his mom, and he, like, throws it in the trash. He's, like, so pissed. And then, um... Oh, and then he he bumps into a friend, and he's, like, he just rushes past his friend because he just, like, he's in such a bad mood. I, I should. I'm just doing quick reviews of things I actually read and absolutely love. Um, and then, like, the crack of, uh... Like, look at that wording. It's just, like... Boom! Boom! This is like... Just... That lettering. You don't need a big sentence to tell how crazy of a loud boom that is. Right? This panel here, just the way he's falling back. And like... You could tell that something crazy is happening. And then you look. There's a big earthquake going. Everything is falling apart. And so, this is the kid he ran past. So now we're into this story of this kid that he ran past... There's a big, loud earthquake going on. The craziest shit starts happening. And then, like, look at that panel. Just, like, how in terror he is. The artwork is gorgeous. And, like, 
he's holding a sign. Look, look, it's his eyes. It pans out. Then you see him. He's holding this sign. If you read Japanese, I think it's the school sign. And then it says the drifting classroom. So the story begins. And all you see is this hole in the side of the ground. And it's like the ground has eaten up. And then the story begins. So that's it. That's how it begins. And here it is. Look at this splash panel. You don't need words to to explain this, right? This is not a panel. You don't need a, a giant page full of dialogue to tell you that there's just a big freaking hole in the ground where the school used to be. Like, look at that. So that's the kid that he ran past. Oh, add time. Okay. I'll, I'll give you guys some beatbox. So we can, <laughs> I forgot it was half an hour. Every half an hour, I think the ads pop up. All right, I'm gonna give you give you guys like 30 seconds. We'll just look at it. so that's so it's the story of that kid. He gets in a fight with his mom. He calls his mom a freaking witch, and then like he runs past the one kid, and then that one kid experiences like the most crazy uh, like earthquake or something going crazy. Oh yeah, it says th this is the school sign. So it does explain that it's the school sign. So we now know it's the school sign. We don't have a big long explanation. It just says this is the school sign. Enough that we know he's looking for his friend because he just his friend ran by and he wants to make sure uh giant pit like how cool is that and that's like such great storytelling uh and then he's like the school is gone and it's just like it's page after page of gorgeous like terror uh so there's the mom and her aftermath she's like you know it's been an earthquake earthquakes are normal in japan so it's not like something that and like she's feeling bad he's like i owe him an apology she's really sad about uh, the fight they had. So she wants... She's got to go find her kid. But then she finds out. Like, like check this out. Okay. Is something wrong? And then you look at her face. She's like kind of doing a fast walk. And then look how fast. Like these people with the zoom lines. Like this panel tells a story of four or five adults. Like running really, really quickly. Like that... You don't need dialogue for that. The drawing alone is telling you how... Like, you know, that says something. And then she's still walking kind of like a little bit faster but all everyone else is zooming past her and she's like hey you know what's happened hey hey what's going on what's going on and then like she starts asking and they're talking about the school disappeared something happened to the school so now she's running for like you as a parent you know the fear of like something happened to your kid so she's panicking her heart's pounding like she's terrified and they look at how fast like everyone is running let me through let me through show show and she's like terrified Oh my god, like, like there's barely any dialogue here, but we just told a story that we all know. We all know that fear of, a, you know, something happening to a loved one. And, uh, like, oh man, and just look at the panel here. Just like, there's like a fire emergency truck or something. Yeah, yeah, I'm sure that, uh, that had some effect on it. And just also just all the earthquakes, you know, I mean, the bombs, of course. That, that created the whole Godzilla thing and all that. Um, but yeah, look at, like, you... That just there's so much going on. Look at her face. She is absolutely exhausted from running in terror. And then she sees his her her son's friend. And look at just like her profile there. You could see the anguish in her face. And she's like, Sinchi, uh, Sinchi, where, where's Show? Did you catch up with him? Where is he now? Where did you get this? It was lying on the street. I should have I, I should have made Show come with me. They're all gone. What do you mean they're all gone? Sinchi, what's wrong? Talk to me. Show. Yeah, man. <laughs> like, like it's epic, epic action. And so, like, you get to the school. So, you got a few more. Uh, okay, and then that's a, uh, like, a flashback a little bit. So, now we're seeing his story going to the school. He's running to the school. So, they're actually, this is in the morning in the school before the event. And, uh... I think there's a couple more spots. I'm not, I, we'll just go through the first like one or two chapters just real quick. So now the the classroom starts shaking. Chapter one, uh, like everything's going like kind of crazy. Things are rattling. The kids are all starting to get a little bit terrified. Like the look on their face, they all look terrified. And then look, oh man, look at this. Boom, 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 boom. Like you don't need a lot of dialogue. This just this page says so much just the terror in their faces and the ah that's like the only dialogue that and the boom 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 like oh man i love this i had so much fun reading this so it ends up being 
you know, three or four pages of them trying to figure out what happened. Uh, the teachers start panicking a little bit. And, uh, like, the kids are, like, start running around trying to figure it all out. Like, what's going on? And so here they come to the fence. So this is at the front of the school. You see all the teachers. Look how still and silent. They're just sitting there. Like, like what is going on? What the heck is going on? And then you see a show, like, running up to them. Like, what is going on? Like, they look mesmerized. Like, what the heck happened? And so that's why they're looking out from the school. <laughs> look how freaking, like, the school is now in, like, a wasteland. It's been teleported to another dimension or another time or something. Like, holy crap. Like, look at that panel. And all of the dialogue you have is, ah! But that panel, to me, in just in pictures, this panel says way more than a novel will say. Like, that's just amazing to me. So it becomes, I always tell on this show, looking out into the wasteland. Like, look at that wasteland. This guy must have spent a week drawing this thing. Because that wasteland just looks awesome. <laughs> so it's, uh, you guys know. So it's uh, by Kazu Umez. Here's the opening page, The Drifting Classroom. It's a horror story. It's a survival tale. You guys know survival tales are my favorite type of storytelling. And it's about this classroom that gets teleported to another time and place. And it's about the families outside the time, like trying to figure out what happened and then the, what's happening in the classroom. I just, it has so many amazing... Right, I got to find one more. Like it has all these amazing splash pages. I think there's one point where there's like these buildings that are buried underground. I gotta find it. Like that when I flip to this page, like because they go through a cave and outside the cave they're just like the side of a building. I was just like, holy crap! Look at that. Like, like look at that. The, here they are. They're going through the crate. Like, oh my gosh, I love it. So anyway. You guys asked me, uh, this one has three volumes, and they're, but they're really thick volumes. They're a pretty quick read because it's not dialogue heavy. It's just beautifully illustrated. But when you ask me what kind of stuff I read, I read stuff like that to because I get so much joy out of a story that's told in pictures. When I read something like this, I love the pictures, but there's no story. Like I, I, This just looks like people posed. They're posed again. There's a woman. They're posed like, I don't see any storytelling in the, the images in this EC comic. Like, sort of a little bit of a storyline. There's a dog excited for the alien dude and this kid. But this kid doesn't look scared. He looks like he's just being a brat. So I, what I'm saying is I love storytelling where the images and the lines and the things. Just like this. Just like this. That's why I really enjoy manga. So that's what I actually read. If I'm going to read something, I usually read a good manga. So I collect comics for the covers. I collect manga to read it. But also for the covers and the artwork. Hey, Ralph. Okay, you guys ready for some more comics? <laughs> I think this is fun. This is awesome. By doing the live streams, you guys can influence me about different topics I want to talk about. And I think that's kind of awesome, actually. Uh, oh, what was this? Oh, that was something I got for free last night. Okay, let's start uh, digging through some more stuff. Okay, I got a... Uh, oh, this is from the Golden Age Guru. This was a free comic book. So I won that night. What I love about the Golden Age Guru is he puts all his stuff into a golden bag. <laughs> so, like, it fits his persona. It says, congrats on the uh, win, Sean. Sincerely, Golden Age Guru. This is awesome. Okay, here we go. So I won a, uh, a Lobo's Back number two. I don't think it's a super valuable comic book, but, you know, for free... Free is always good. And what I do like is a lot of times I'll enter in... Um, I didn't buy anything this night, but there's a lot of times where if I win something for free, I use the unlocked shipping to, um, you know, buy the other stuff for cheap. Okay, here's another package. This one's from Notorious Hobbies. And this was also a free giveaway from whatnot. And this one is actually a really cool free giveaway. So we have a Spawn... Uh, what was it? 339 blank cover. Yeah, <laughs> it, I, I, it's, it's like Lobo with a woman's ass. I'm not sure what's going on in that picture. <laughs> so that was another free win on whatnot, but that was a really, really, really cool uh, win getting a free uh, blank cover. Okay, this package was seven items I paid $70 for. This was from SMZ Enterprises. Oh yeah, this had a lot of really cool variants. 
Here we go. All right. So we have this beautiful Lee and Hugh uh, Sweet Paprika cover. Absolutely love that one. That one is gorgeous. Lovely and Hook stuff. Let me see what I paid for this one. So this says number 14. I do love when vendors actually put a number on the thing you bought so you can figure out what you paid for it. So this one was $8. I had to buy that. $8 was a steal. And $8 was with, um, it was $3, but $5 shipping. Now it did have a, a dent on it. That's why it was cheap. But I love the cover. I'm just happy to have a cover. I don't need a 9.8. I'd rather buy a beautiful cover with a little bit of damage for like super duper cheap than pay, you know, $80 for this as a 9.8. Because I want to just have the artwork. So having it for $8 was fantastic for me. Uh, next, we have this awesome Wonder Woman cover. This one was uh, eleven fifty. Not sure the artist on this one, but I just thought it was really gorgeous. It's a big, thick issue. Uh, this was a pretty limited Vampirella, I believe. This one was eleven fifty, and I think this was like five hundred pieces. Not hundred percent sure, but I'm pretty sure the print run on that one was really low. And then uh, I've been buying a lot of Vampirella lately. Number forty six is uh, eight fifty. Gorgeous cover. A Venom Lethal Protector, number two. This one was $7.50. I think this one was a ratio. Beautiful cover. Uh, and Batgirls, number one. This was a store exclusive. This one was $8.50. So $8.50 was a good price on that. And then the uh, Virgin variant of this one, this one was $14.50. So that was a fun little batch of variants. Uh, okay, let's see what else I could find. I'm trying to think if I have anything I bought that was older stuff. Because a lot of times when I buy on whatnot, I don't like buying the older stuff just because it's um it's hard to see the condition and all that. And I get such great deals in person on that kind of stuff. Okay, this is... Uh, I feel bad. It's another Frankie's Comics. This one was from January. So this was before I boycotted them. Uh, it's a couple of cool comics, though. So we have, here we got a uh, beautiful J. Scott Campbell, Sabine Rich cover. Uh, this one I paid, I think, oh, it doesn't say what number on the back it does. Oh, 14. Okay. That one I paid 10 bucks for. That one's awesome. And then the uh, really awesome, um, Miles Morales. I think that's a Clayton Green, uh, limited to 1500 pieces. So super limited, awesome, awesome cover. And that one was, uh, 1050, 1050 felt like a steal on that. Cause I feel like that's easily like a 20 or $30 book. Okay, next we have, uh, let's see. This was a Toy USA package. I bought this one in February. Uh, so he didn't buy them on whatnot. He bought the uh, from Frankie's Comics from their website in December, literally right before they went bankrupt. They went bankrupt and they didn't ship out anyone's orders and they just went, the customer's orders went into the bankruptcy so they didn't have to ship them out. So they kept selling on whatnot but they didn't ship out any customer's orders from the website. And his order was probably like 200 bucks. So uh, eventually he got a refund like a month and a half later from his credit card. But it was total trash that they decided to keep selling this stuff. But they didn't ship out people's orders. I think that was complete trash. I don't care. You go bankrupt. Make sure you cover the orders that you got first. Then worry about everyone else. Uh, he just did it with his credit card on the website and he did get a refund from his credit card. So at least he got a refund. It took him like a month though. So it was just, it's the whole principle and it's the amount of energy and time that you have to put into it. If they just refunded everyone or if they had shipped out the orders, I think it would have been fine. They could deal with the bankrupt and they could maybe still live afterwards. But the fact that they did ship the orders, but they kept selling on whatnot is what really got me upset. So yeah, I, I bought one or two times after that event and then I felt really dirty each time. So I had to just stop buying from Frankie's. Well, that's the thing. They put all the customers' orders into the bankruptcy so that they didn't ship any of those, but then they kept selling. So instead of taking the stuff they were selling on whatnot, they, that, like, the bankruptcy, they should have tried to fight for a way to still sell or ship out the stuff to the people. Because how, how does it help them financially if people start getting refunds on all of them? Like, it doesn't. It doesn't at all. And you have a bunch of angry people now. Oh, and the funny thing, too, is one of the orders they sent me, a thing was missing. And so I was like, instead of... I just went directly to Whatnot to get a refund. Whatnot refunded me, like, a day later. Whatnot is great for refunds. 
And then, but when I went back to Frankie's, they also, they banned me. I couldn't even go into the room. <laughs> so I just tell it everyone. I was like, yeah, Frankie's banned me. I was like kind of good though. Cause I, I, I bought like two more times and then I was like, I, I was going to stop. Uh, but then I got that order like a week after I stopped going to them. So I just like, I wanted to go. No, what did I do? I went directly. I left a one out of five feedback and I got my refund. And then the next day, I just wanted to see what was up in the room. Just like, I wanted to see if people were still buying or whatnot. And I couldn't get in the room. It said, I, or it was as if like I didn't exist. It was crazy. Uh, okay, so this is uh, Toy USA from uh, February. It looks like I bought four comics. Let's see what we got. It's fine. I went to comic traders. I'm like, yeah, hey, comic traders. Frankie's uh, banned me. And they were like laughing and they were telling a couple of crazy stories of the shit that was happening. I like comic traders. Those guys are awesome. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's see. Number 56. All right, paid $4.50 for this guy. Awesome price. I do love X23 covers. So I'll buy all the ones I don't have. That one's gorgeous. Uh, on Sacred, I buy all the Mark on Dalfo stuff I can get. This one was $2.50. So that was like super duper cheap. And that's $2.50 shipped. So I think it was like $0.50 cent shipping. Uh, this awesome Demon Day Stance Guy cover, which is awesome. Also Peach Momoko Interiors. That one was $3.50. So yeah, I was just grabbing some cheap books this night. $3.50 on that. And then a really cool X-Men Grand Design number two. And this one was 7 bucks. This is probably the first thing I bought that night. So it's probably $7, like 2 or $3 plus shipping basically. So yeah, just a couple cheap books in that box. Okay, I'm going to clear these out because the stacks are getting a little bit high here. Oh, my voice is still a little bit raspy. Okay, I'm going to clear out these stacks. Uh, we still have a bunch of stuff to go through, so I think we'll definitely be able to get to at least an hour and a half tonight. So I hope you guys are enjoying these hauls of random stuff. And feel free to ask me any questions or anything you want me to talk about or... Something I can highlight next time. Because it is kind of fun bringing stuff to talk about. Uh, okay, this was a Nerd Pharmaceuticals box. This one was from uh, December. So this one's, a, you know, four or five months old. Uh, this one was $179 total. Let me see what we got. It looks like more Red Sonia. So that's their exclusive the red sonia i forget the artist it's just i think this artist does kind of cutesy i mean it's sort of sexy but more like the cutesy sexy and i kind of like that it's kind of fun and i just i'm a huge red sonia fan so i thought that was a cool cover uh all right i gotta figure out what i pay oh did i write it on the box i did oh. all right i'm gonna try to figure out what i paid for everything if i can I think these are one of the vendors. Nerf Pharmaceuticals doesn't uh, write down. Uh, oh, so this was ten twenty-five. So ten bucks. Ten bucks is good because I think their retail is twenty on them. So when they start the auctions cheap, you get them cheap. Uh, this one was also ten fifty. Another fun red Sonia cover, uh, Vampirella cover. That one was ten fifty. That one I actually might have duplicated. That one I might duplicate it as well. That one was also ten fifty. And that's the Bloody Hands version, regular version. So that was ten fifty. Uh, the two of them together was ten fifty. So these are cool. I really like the covers on these. Uh, David Nakayama gargoyles. Love David Nakayama. Uh, that one was eight fifty. Beautiful cover. Absolutely love that cover. I love any Spider-Man transportation covers. Like it's the Forest Hills train. So is that the Seven train? Awesome, awesome uh, cover there. That one was. Uh, I think that was twelve twenty-five beautiful cover and then uh hey jimmy that amazing fantasy was 25 25 i think this was a ratio if i remember correctly and then oh yeah look at that awesome peach Momoko. uh jambo i i probably when i see the covers i'll probably know what they are i just don't remember the name very well i'm bad with names in general i don't really remember them very often um, but I have like pretty much everything Red Sonia that's older, so I probably have it all. Uh, and then this one was, uh, no, okay, so that one was probably $12.50, and then this one I think was the one that was $25. So this is a 1 in 100 Peach Momoko for $25. That was a steal, steal of a deal on that. Amazing. 
And then uh, something's killing the children. Virgin variant Peach Momoko. That one was nineteen. Absolutely love my peach covers. And then uh, Deathstroke. I think this one was a dollar fifty. Dollar <laughs> fifty for a really awesome Deathstroke cover. Love that. That was just like I had to grab it. Oh, it's Ivan Tao. I didn't realize it was Ivan Tao. Oh yeah, I love Ivan Tao. Okay, awesome. Yeah, I, all these modern artists make such gorgeous covers to me. Like I love. Peach Momoko, because she is paint on paper. It's ink and paint on paper, so it's a traditional artwork. And then I love, like, Ivan Tao. It's a really awesome digital artwork. So it's like a whole gambit of types of styles. And I really, I like them all. I think they're amazing. Uh, okay, so that was that box. Let's see. Uh, okay. <laughs> okay, I got, all right. I feel dirty again. I have... This is from December, though. This is before they were bankrupt. I have a big Frankie's. Like, I enjoyed Frankie's because they were great prices for awesome comics. So this was $147.75 from December. Frankie's Comics, another giant pile from them. Oh, I feel so dirty. <laughs> Sorry, Alex. I feel bad. I feel bad that I bought stuff before I knew that I was going to be mad at them. Uh, I even did a video ranting and raving how much I love buying from them, like in January before the, I realized they were bankrupt. Okay, <laughs> are these numbered? All right, number sixty says I paid nine fifty, and I think it was for both of these. Yeah, two was it for three? Yep, three, four. Okay, so yeah, these four comics. So we have Gambit number two. We have Gambit number one. We have the Peach Momoko Gambit number one, which would have been probably the main reason why I bought the lot. And Gambit number four, because usually this stuff that just the regular A covers I get later on for like a buck. So those four Gambits were $9.50. So that's pretty good. Uh, okay, 54, I think. So this was a Buffy lot. Yeah, these two Buffy books. Uh, absolutely love the Peach Momoko Buffy cover. That one's gorgeous. Uh, these were $7.50. So super, super steal on that. Uh, and then we have... This is this 53. Yeah, that's 53. So this pair, awesome painted uh, Fantastic Four cover. Absolutely. Lo I love painted covers. Those are gorgeous. I just, I don't know how someone could not love an awesome painted cover. And this was uh, 1550 for those. Amazing. I'll buy any awesome cover with a thing on it, honestly. He's one of my all-time favorite characters. Uh, what number is this? This one is a 48. So I paid 1150 for this lot. Which I think was two. Yeah, just the two books. Both Adam Hughes covers, though. Gorgeous Adam Hughes covers. And those were, uh, what did I say? 11.50? Yeah, 11.50. So five bucks a piece felt like a steal on those. Uh, all right, next we have the J. Hung Lee, which is 43. 43, I paid 23.50. So like 11 bucks each. Uh, decent price on those. Gorgeous, gorgeous Spider Gwen covers. Absolutely love those. I think they're beautiful. Oh, yeah. And then this Rose Besh cover is awesome. I love this one. This is a Catwoman Harley Quinn cover. This one was uh, 36 I paid twelve fifty for the lot. Yeah, it was two of them. So twelve fifty for the pair. Amazing price on those because that's like a $20 issue. Easy. Absolutely love Rose Besh stuff. Uh, I thought this Thor cover was just super dope looking. Look how cool it looks. He's all like covered in blood and stuff. Uh, 32 was 1550 and that was also a lot of two. I think this night's theme was like lots of two. So 1550 felt like a great price on those two. Gorgeous, gorgeous covers. Well, I mean, that one's okay. That's an okay cover, but that one's gorgeous. Uh, this Jen Bartel cover, absolutely love this. The silk cover, and it's the trade and the virgin. This was what, number 22. Uh, this one was 1550. Great deal on those. That's like an easy 20, 25 dollar cover. Probably like 10 for that. So it's thrilled to get those because I think they're just gorgeous. I love the blues and the reds and everything. And then Demon Days. What was this? Number 17. This one was 1050 for the pair. And uh oh, I just got it because of the Michael Arwood cover. Absolutely gorgeous. And I think Peach Morocco does the interiors of these. I'm gonna double check. I think these are Peach books, which is amazing to me. When you get a book where the interior artist is better than the cover artist, like Micro Art, I love, though. I'm not saying... But on that one, like, I feel like the interior is going to be better. But interior is panel after panel of Peach Momoko painted. Like, how gorgeous is this comic book? And she... Her... Since she's Japanese, her style of writing is also... I mean, it's going the American way, but it's also... Like, you see a river. Oh, a river. 
That's all she says. She's drinking from it. Like it's the storytelling is within the pictures and not the dialogue. And I like a comic like that, especially if the artwork is so beautiful. Like it's page after page of the most beautiful painted watercolor art. Yeah. She's amazing. I love that. Awesome, awesome book. Uh, I don't think I have. There's a David Bowie, Michael Howard book. I haven't heard of that. Jason, I have to get that. That sounds amazing. I love Michael Howard artwork in general, though. So I'm going to add that to my list of things I need to hunt down now. Thanks. Thanks for spending my money for me. Make it too easy. Okay, we got one more uh, random Ziggy box I'm going to open here. Yeah, I'm going to have to get it. Because Michael Howard stuff is fun. I lo absolutely love it. I just There's something about just the hand-drawn nature of it and the thick lines and just how unique and it's its own thing. Like, when you see Michael Howard, you know it's Michael Howard. I love it. Okay, and then they just have another one of these green envelopes in the envelope. I think this is just a random item that I missed out on my shipments. I know, I really hope she does. It was just, it was so fun to watch her paint in person. I didn't get to meet her, like, in the sense that I got something signed, but I literally stand up two feet from her as she painted. That was amazing. Oh, <laughs> Jason, I know how that goes. You're like, oh, this is amazing. Let me get this for my friend. No, nah, this is too amazing. I'm going to just keep it. <laughs> uh, show, uh, Jason, when you get a chance, show me the cover of it so I know what it looks like so I can add it to my radar. I might actually just have to order that. Because that sounds absolutely amazing. Oh, this is a funny thing. I probably paid 20-something dollars just to ship this thing. It's probably cheap. And it's like, this is... This is a ridiculous collectible. It's, like, is it even a collectible? Is it anything that anyone actually want except for me that, like, like I'm crazy? It's a uh, 1970s Ziggy comb. It's a comb with Ziggy on it. Like, <laughs> I love that. But, like, how ridiculous is that? I probably paid, like, $20 just to ship that. I love it, though. I love my Ziggy stuff. Amazing. Okay. Uh, okay, well, I have a package here from Street Level Hero. I think this was just two mystery boxes. Uh, I ended up only buying two that night. They're relatively cheap, 39 and 28 But I couldn't feel uh, or get a feel for what the winning numbers were that night, so I didn't really buy a lot. I don't really like to buy the uh, their mystery boxes unless I feel like I know which ones are going to have a higher chance of hitting. And I don't remember. I don't think I... I know it's adorable. Tacoma is adorable. I love it. I'm not going to use it. I'm going to put it in my collection. Uh, okay, 51 So I paid $28 for this. I did buy it because it was a one. And for a while there, the ones were hitting. So I did that. Um, it is a really fun White Widow cover. I kind of want to put a set of White Widow together. Man, my trash pile is piling up. <laughs> this one is signed by the author, I think, Benny Powell. Uh, we got a, another Ninja Funk. I'm going to have so many Ninja Funks. I think I'm at the point where I have enough. <laughs> Until they make more issues, then I got to buy again. A really awesome Tyler Kirkham Venom cover, though. That's easy, a $20 book. And uh, Spider-Man 2099 Exodus, number three. Oh, and a really beautiful Sabine Rich Thor, number 25. I actually really love that book, too. So, not, I mean, value-wise, not a bad value. I didn't overpay. I didn't really get quite a deal or anything, but still pretty cool. And then pack number 68. What did I pay on that? Uh, I paid 25 for 68. So at least I got this pack cheap. Oh, and this is actually kind of cool. So in this pack, I got a Spectacular Spider-Man 121. But this one is signed by Mark Texera. So that's actually kind of cool. I really, I like that a lot. I got a duplicate of that. Uh, really cool Rico Miles Morales cover. Uh, a fun Phoenix Wolverine cover, Wolverine series, and a Tyler Kirkham Juggernaut. So again, like not like any good steal of a deal or anything, but some fun stuff. And a lot of duplicates, so I'll probably just sell them and get my money back. Okay, next we have... Oh, we have a big KRS box. Okay, back to KRS. KRS is definitely one of my favorite vendors right now. I love buying on their whatnot shows just because the deals are fantastic. And this one... Uh, Oh, I didn't total the price. I think I spent... Uh, did I put a total on here? I forgot the total. I meant to add this all up. I didn't. I think it was like $500 worth. And if I remember correctly, there's a lot of cheaper mystery boxes. They're cheaper mystery boxes. I just don't didn't like as much. I bought a whole bunch, but the results didn't weren't as exciting for me 
as the $100 boxes. The $100 boxes, you get, like, really fire stuff. These boxes, the $25 ones were, like, ah, kind of fun, but not awesome. Yeah, it is a really awesome. Tyler Kirkham does a fun cover, so it is a cool Juggernaut cover. Okay, let me figure out what we got in these packs. That's, uh, okay, this was... Okay. So I bought, I think, 10 packs at 25 bucks. I was like, why not? <laughs> I felt like that was a good price. So this, uh, so these packs, the first pack I paid 34 and then the second and further packs I paid 29 So they're about like $32 on average per pack for uh, five comics. So $6 a comic. So all right, let's see. Uh, oh, okay. It's one hour. I realized, I didn't realize it's an hour. Okay, we'll, we'll uh, talk about nothing. I mean, nothing, nothing. Let's see, my favorite nothing. How about um, uh, the Lang Langoliers? Is that the Stephen King book in television series where time starts like disappearing behind an airplane i thought that was a fun survival tale that was a really cool survival tale uh how long are the ads are they five second you can quick skip them or are they uh big long ads i don't know okay i'm gonna go um are you guys back are the ads over all right here we go you didn't miss much or you can skip forward uh okay so i paid about what was it five six dollars a book so we'll see if for six dollars a book if these were a good deal or not so we have a one in ten clone wars book i mean that's actually kind of cool it's a ratio six dollars doesn't feel like too bad of a price oh okay that's an easy 20 something dollar book so that was actually a really good book for six bucks uh so that i guess there's one better exclusive per pack okay so you know what the one exclusive pays for the pack everything else is for free uh, i think this is just a regular a cover though uh this is the first howie so that might have a little bit of value. Oh, five, all right, five seconds is nothing. And I appreciate you guys watching the ad for five seconds. It does really help support the channel. Helps it grow. The algorithm, when it has ads on the videos, the algorithm actually uh, promotes videos more. So like if there's no ads, it doesn't get promoted. Uh, okay, now we have a big stack here. I don't know if this is one pack or individual purchases. Okay, I'm gonna open up this pack. Okay, give me a second. I should have prepared myself a bit better. But honestly, I, I worked all night and then I literally just woke up like 20 minutes, 10 minutes before I started streaming it. Okay, all right. Ugh, so much tape on this thing. Okay. Uh, these might have been individual purchases because I think that's a ratio. And so let me see if I can find the ratios on the list here. KRS boxes. Um, mm -hmm. Give me one second. What is this? Spider Gwen Clone Wars? No, uh, yeah, so this is the 1 in 25. I paid $7.50. $7.50 for 1 in 25 is amazing. Awesome, awesome price on that. Uh, oh, these are, are these all upside down? No, just a couple of them. Okay, we have Devil's Reign Omega. That one is a 1 in 50. Really, really high ratio for $8.50. I felt like a steal on that with an awesome cover. Uh, I really like the um, Rian Gonzalez artwork. And this was a 1 in 25 for $12.50. Beautiful, fun cover. Love that one. Uh, Spider Gwen Gwenverse number 5. This one was a 1 in 25. I paid $7.50 for it. $7.50 for a 1 in 25 feels like such a steal. Okay, let's see. Oh, flip that one. Uh, a fun Ivan Tao Harley Quinn. This one was a um, 1 in 25 for 11 50 Again, an awesome price for a ratio. I love buying ratios for like 10 bucks. Uh, the Harley Quinn number 24, a beautiful uh, lyrics cover, Leslie lyrics. This one was uh, 1 in 25, went for 22 50 That cover is gorgeous. Absolutely love that cover. Uh, Daredevil number one, Stegman variant, one in 25, $7.50. I'll buy, you know, $7.50 for a pretty cool cover for $7.50, one in 25. Amazing deal on that. Uh, Deadpool number one, this is a one in 50 variant. Awesome cover. Absolutely love that one. That one was $18.50. Okay, then one more variant. I didn't I buy that one last night? <laughs> I might have duplicated that one, but that one's a one in 25 as well. I paid $9.50, which feels like a steal on that. Okay, amazing, amazing stuff. Okay, let me move these to the side and then we'll grab the next series of boxes. Okay. Okay. 
Okay, there we go. All right, I'm going to grab another box. We're going to see what we have. I think the rest of these will be the... Yeah, so the rest of these are all the packs. Yeah. <laughs> that's all right, though. I, I, I'm guessing that's an easy, like, $15, $20 book. So I'll be able to sell one and almost pay for the second one. So all the rest of these are all the packs I paid $29. Hey, Black Phoenix. So we'll see if I paid... Uh, what was that? $6 a book. I know that Deadpool cover was amazing. Um... So all these packs are going to have one KRS book that will probably be worth the 25 and then a bunch of just cheaper stuff. So I think, I mean, it was a good price for these. Uh, they weren't terrible, but I wasn't finding anything that was like super amazing, whereas their $100 packs are the ones I'm really excited for. Oh, this is cool. It's a 1 in 25 Predator number one. How awesome is that? Ryan Brown cover. Uh, $6 for that feels like a real good steal, actually. Oh, and then the Boss Logic. This one I did get a few days ago as well, but a Boss Logic Spider-Man cover. Absolutely love this cover. I think this one is amazing. Gorgeous comic. Uh, oh, and then I was really happy to get this because I didn't have it yet. So we have Bloodline Daughter of Blade Peach Momoko cover. It's just a cover price comic. Nothing super special or anything, but I was thrilled to get that in the pack. And then we have Red Zone. Uh, not sure what that is, but it looks interesting. And then we have uh, Batman, The Adventures Continue Season 3. So I don't know even know which one of these was the KRS. So this pack felt like a little bit of a weaker pack. But, I mean, the 1 in 25 Predator actually is probably a good chunk of the $25 in value. Yeah, this weekend is the, the uh, free comic book days. Day to go get those free comics. <laughs> okay, next pack. Next pack. Again, $29, 6 bucks, 5 bucks. Five, or five bucks, so it'll be uh, six dollars a piece. Five bucks. Oh, this first one looks super cool, though. So the first book, Hulk thirteen, is a uh, homage cover. Really cool. That's the uh, store exclusive, so that's probably like retail twenty dollars. Uh, this is a free comic book day comic from a year or two ago, but it's the first appearance of Bloodline. I think that's Blade's daughter. So this one actually has a little bit of value, maybe like five bucks. Uh, a fun uh, Green Ranger Virgin variant. That's actually kind of neat. Uh, Miles Morales Spider-Man 38. That one might be a ratio, actually. And, uh, oh, no. It does, they've been playing this. So not a ratio, just a variant. And then a uh, Batman Fear State Alpha 1. But that one is a ratio. Actually, that was a really good pack for 30 bucks. That one had a lot of value in it. Okay, that's good. So some of the packs were a little bit weaker, but that was a really good pack. Yeah, the whole cover is amazing. Okay, this one is... Okay, so we got another pack here. This looks like a, uh, a Gun Honey cover. Let me scooch that over. So we have a 1 in 25 Gun Honey. That book is kind of cool. It's a cool ratio. We have... Oh, that's a really cute Black Cat cover. So $6 for that feels good. Uh, Lars, you gotta rewind the video. I have a, uh, I did a whole great thing about the stuff I actually read. So watch at the beginning of the video. You'll see that. I think I did that for you, actually. <laughs> I'll probably end up reading none of these, honestly. Uh, Dawn of, Su Dawn of Enters a Super... The thing, too, is with variants like this, I don't read... I buy these for the covers. I buy books to read. I'd rather read in a trade... I'd rather have, like, five or six issues at once. That way I don't have to figure out what goes with what. Uh, oh, a really awesome lyrics, Deja Thoris, though. That cover is gorgeous. Gorgeous, gorgeous. And then we have uh, Lost Superman, number one. That cover is cool. All right, that pack I'm happy with. There's a lot of fun stuff in there. Okay, and then uh, another box of packs. Like I said, I think I ended up buying 10 of these packs. And, you know, I was getting my values worth. That just isn't as exciting as the... Um, you know, the $100 packs, because you'll end up getting books that are worth like one, two, three hundred dollars $300 sometimes. Whereas these, you know, maybe the best book is 10 to 20 bucks. Oh, this is a cool Hulk cover, though. Okay, so we have a 1 in 25 ratio for Hulk, number 9. That's super cool. Love, love the cover. I think it's awesome. Uh, oh, that's a really cool Hulk cover, too. Oh, I love that one. Tyler Kirkham cover. Awesome homage cover. Uh, Superman 1, Dawn of DC, a fun foil cover. Oh, that's cool, actually. 
Uh, Van Helsing Annual number one. That's a cute cover. And uh, a really cool Art Germ Joker cover. Man, that's awesome. Yeah, Darren, I, uh, I, I mean, this is my free time. I work all the time, but I do, I enjoy. So I just like, if you don't have time to read, you can still collect a little bit just if you enjoy the covers. Uh, but yeah, it's hard to find time to read them. Okay, number 10. Let's see, again, I paid $6 issue on this pack. So we'll see if I got my values worth. So basically, like $6 on something like this, maybe too high on that is cover price. So maybe a little bit high. But then they throw in a couple of way better, more valuable, like $20 books. So it kind of evens out. Pretty sure I got value out of these packs. Because, I like, so far it's been pretty good. Okay, we got a Black Cat Mary Jane. So I think that's just the regular cover. So something like that's probably only three or four bucks. Still a cool comic book. Happy to have it. A uh, really fun Jenny Freeze and Harley Quinn cover, though. I love that. But I think that's just the regular B cover. Or is it a variant? Yeah, just the regular B cover. Uh, Deadpool number two. That's cool. Uh, Star Wars Yoda. So that's the store exclusive. That one might have some value to it. And, oh, a 1 in 25 Venom. That's actually really cool, too. That one, I think I just got uh, one or two videos ago. Uh, Joe, go as soon as possible. Some LCSs will let you just uh, grab what you want. Some LCSs will just limit you to like a handful. My local comic shop will let you take one of each, which is amazing. And he has 15 long boxes. So I've actually gone in a day after free comic book shop and got them all from him. So it really depends on how generous your local comic shop is. Action City Comics, he is super duper generous. He does, he loves, you know, his customers. He loves comics. So he just buys so much that he can just give away. He invests in it. He's willing to buy more than enough so that everyone has an awesome day. So it's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm way behind because I barely read any of my comics. <laughs> I read my manga usually. I usually buy manga to read and uh, comics to enjoy the artwork. All right, so this is super cool. One in 10 Peach Momoko. Uh, you know, I'm happy just to get that. That alone made this pack worth it for me. Uh, we have a Alex Ross, uh, Morbius. Yeah, Lars, you are definitely a comic reader. You are collecting for the love of the story. So you just everyone collects in a different way, and I appreciate every way that someone collects. Uh, we got Star Wars The High Republic number six. Another beautiful cover. Love that cover. Whereas I'm a very visual person, so I collect for the, the art. And for making videos like this and to enjoy the act of collecting. So that's how I collect comics. I don't really collect them because I want to read them all. Uh, Dark Web, Mary Jane, and Black Cat number one. Another beautiful. So this pack was awesome. There's a lot of Peach Momoka. Oh, and this one's sweet. So this is easily a $20, $30 book. So we have Batman the Adventure Continues, a homage cover, Warren Lau. Or Warren Liu. That one is gorgeous. That was a great pack. That's probably like a $40, $50 pack. Double value pack. Okay, next, uh, okay. All right. Oh, yeah, one third, yeah. Thank you, Jerry. Now, I don't think Jerry reads his books that much either, right? Jerry's into comics for the, the love of the history of the comic books and the love of, you know, restoring them. He'll literally take a book that most people read in... 10 minutes and he'll literally spend jerry how long do you think you take to uh, restore a book or conserve a book you probably take 40 hours a single book bring it back alive so that someone else in the future can read it and i think that's amazing all right i'll predict <laughs> yeah that's it yeah exactly jerry is in it for the love of saving the history and, and preserving it and just having it so that these beautiful artifacts from 50, 60, 70 years ago are still around in another 50, 60, 70 years. So future generations can enjoy them. And that's the thing. The comics are beautiful and you can enjoy them in so many different ways. You could just collect them. You could buy them to sell them. You can buy them to read them and enjoy the stories. You could buy them to... Uh, just, you know, you want to collect them in order and you want complete sets. You can buy them... In beat up condition to restore them. I know, Jerry. I always think when I turn sixty five, I'm just gonna read all my comics. <laughs> I'm gonna spend twenty years reading every single one. But yeah, I I 
the art form of enjoying comic books, the way I enjoy comic books is I do videos and I share them with you guys and I share my joy of the artwork and the covers. And to me, that's how I get my value of them. Over for it. Yeah, Jerry, literally, he'll take a comic book and spend more time with it than anyone on this planet will spend, except for other people that can serve. And that's like, to me, that's a beautiful, magical thing. And the thing that I love is that Jerry shares it on his website. If, if you haven't watched his YouTube channel, follow him. It's beautiful, beautiful. It's just amazing watching him take something that's crumbling and looks like it just has to be in the garbage. And he'll make it so you can read it and enjoy it again. It's amazing. Uh, reflection covers. Reflection covers are cool. I do love reflection covers. But yeah, so there's all kinds of different ways to collect out there. And you know what? I appreciate every single one of you in every single way to collect. The only comic related content or collecting i don't like is when one person judges another and tries to prevent them from enjoying the comics in the way they enjoy them if someone wants to take a beautiful comic book and light it on fire uh, i mean that hurts a little bit but that's exactly um you know if that's what they want to do then you know i'm not gonna stop them although uh no I, I no all right never mind forget that i don't want you destroying comics all right i'm against people that buy comics to destroy them <laughs> I found it. I found a single way of comic collecting or use that I do not like. If you read your comic book to the point where it falls apart, I love that. That's beautiful. You you got your value out of it. You enjoyed it. That comic was a mu you know beautiful vessel of enjoyment. And but if you buy a comic book just because you want to destroy it because you hate comic books, okay, I'm not okay with that. <laughs> okay, so people that hate other people for the way they collect and people who destroy their comics on purpose for just the destruction purpose like if someone buys a comic that throw in a shredder for a youtube channel i don't know if i like that either okay i found it <laughs> other than that every other single way of collecting and enjoying comic books is beautiful <laughs> okay uh was this another pack no these are more individual purchases i gotta figure out what i paid on these where did i put my receipt crud i dropped the receipt now i have no idea okay i'm just assuming i paid like five to ten dollars each on these yeah, you got to follow Jerry. I, I Honestly, Jerry is one of the few channels I watch almost every day, if not every day. There'll be weeks where I watch every day. There'll be a few days where I miss a few days because I'm so busy. But then I go back and I watch them because I feel like I'm missing out. I want to see what's going on. I want to see the progress of all the books he's working on. Uh, okay, we have X-Men Gold number 30 variant. I don't remember why I paid on these. I lost my invoice. So I'm assuming I paid like probably around 5 to $15 each on these. We have uh, Punchline Gotham Game. Number four, that cover is absolutely adorable. That one is a 1 in 25. Absolutely love that one. We have a Dan Hip Miles Morales. I've become a huge fan of Dan Hip. I really like his whimsical cartoon style. Uh, this one I think I got for like $7. I remember it felt like such a steal because I think that was also a ratio. Uh, Batgirls, number one, Dan Hip again. Amazing cover. Absolutely love this one. Uh, Web of Black Widow, number one. I think that was a ratio. Uh, Catwoman 47, that one's definitely a 1 in 25. Actually, I think it says... On the DC books, the newer ones, it actually tells you. Yeah, it says a 1 in 25 variant. And then uh, Poison Ivy, number 10. This one is a uh, 1 in 25. That's a gorgeous cover. Absolutely love that one. Uh, Steven Spock, I think I said hello. If I didn't, hello. If I missed anyone else, hello. Uh, beautiful Harley Quinn. This one is also a 1 in 25. I love buying the ratios. Uh, the thing with ratios is in New York City, you don't see them because a lot of shops don't buy 25 copies except for like Midtown Comics. But Midtown Comics charges the ratio as price. So if it's a 125, they charge 25. So buying the ratios on whatnot for like $5 to $10 to me is amazing. I'll buy them all day long, especially if it has a beautiful or a fun cover. Uh, amazing Spider-Man number seven. I think this was a ratio as well. And that was probably, again, like $5 to $10. And uh, that's the one thing I love when they have the ratio nights. I end up buying every single ratio. We have a uh, Devil's Reign. Uh, I think that's our ratio as well. So five to ten. And oh, did I win this one live two nights ago? <laughs> so I bought this one already, and I won it again just because it's a David Mack foil cover, and I probably paid like fifteen dollars for it. It's amazing. I think I just bought it again for like fifteen dollars the other night. That's not a fifteen dollar book. That's uh, it's like a. One and fifty. It's uh, like fifteen dollars feels like such a steal on that. I know ratios are simply stunning. There's all these beautifully painted covers. Like this one is kind of boring to me. I mean, I don't hate it. It's okay, but it's not like they um 
I don't feel like someone put too much effort into that one. Whereas this one's like a beautiful painted one. That one's a beautiful foil. This one just looks amazing. I just love the way uh, Poison Ivy looks. So yeah. Okay. So that was that box. Uh, let's see. We, I got five more boxes. So we'll keep going. I don't know if we'll make two hours tonight, but we're going to try if we can. Because I'm enjoying these really long streams the last week or so. And then we're going to keep it up. I have, I think, enough more comics to open up that I've purchased the last six months to uh, do two or three more nights. And then um, I'll start the collection. So I'm just, as you guys, when I get closer to the collection tour, you guys start telling me what you want to see so I can work on putting that together. I think one night I'm going to do like a Peach Momoko night. One night I'm going to do like a Tencent Archie night. Uh, one night I might do uh, just like a Silver Age Marvel night. Oh, the, yeah, I'm, I'm in uh, Australia. I don't know if they even get reprinted there. I was looking at a vendor selling Australian comics last night. I kind of want to buy some stuff. Uh, okay, so what was this? This was, oh, I bought one pack. One pack from the Spider-Man booth. Uh, number 21, I think, I mean, I bid a lot. I bid 91, so with shipping, it was like 100 bucks. So I either saw that was a thick one or I just was really confident in it. So it might have been the last one of the night as well. Something made me think this was confident. I bought one pack. And the one pack was a ceiling pack. So for 100 bucks, Hey, Ghost Rider. We got a ceiling pack. And... Okay, Trasvik. I'll see you later. So it starts out with the Michael Turner print. They've been doing that since, like, for the last three or four months. Uh, we have a Metal Ninja Funk number one. Which is super neat. I think I got the... You know, that one I got in um, yesterday's packs. But still cool value. Then we have the foil. And then we have... Uh, oh, maybe I got that one. Maybe I didn't have that one, actually. So we have this one. The video head one. That's got the metallic cover. And these ones, they only had in these packs. There's no other way to get these. So I don't even see them on eBay. Sky's the limit. Who knows what the value is on those. And then... Uh, and those, I think they said were limited to 100 and then that Ninja Funk, also Tyler Kirkham, and then Final Boss. And then, as an added bonus, I got a CGC in the pack. Which was a, uh, a Venom number 31. Here, let me move back a little bit so we can see better. So, a Venom 31 in a 9.6, but it's signed by uh, Ryan Stegman. Super duper cool. So for like a hundred bucks, I feel like I definitely got four or five hundred dollars in value out of that pack. That was actually a really awesome score that night. And there's a couple of nights where I've bought like four or five packs and got nothing and just stopped buying. So it's awesome to win a pack after you know maybe a couple of times where I didn't win a pack. So that's awesome. Uh, Tina is a mod on all my channels. Tina rocks. Yeah, Tina. Every time I go in Reggie's, I see Tina and I like I get the warm feelings like oh Tina's there. Appreciate Tina. Tina is a fantastic person. She just, Tina just enjoys the channels and she just puts her heart into them. So it's like easy for her to be a mod. Uh, okay, we have a single purchase from KRS. Uh, this one was $32.75. And uh, was it two things or one thing? I gotta look. Uh, Alright, it was two books. Oh, okay, Lars. No, that's cool. It's cool that you have a, a some variants. But I no, I totally understand, Lars. Though you are a person who enjoys the stories, and I think that's one of the most amazing ways to be a comic collector. Uh, my friend Jason, Jason Finestone Collector, he also collects for the joy of the stories, but he collects kind of indie, interesting, different storylines. So I like, I love that as well. I know. Ninja Funk number one is like a crazy amount, and I kind of want to get all of them, but I don't want to, uh, like, I want all of them, but I don't want to pay for all of them. So that's why I'm buying, like, mystery packs and trying to find them as cheap and as easy as possible. <laughs> okay, so we have uh, Batman 133. This is a uh, 1 in 25 ratio. A Dark Chew cover. Absolutely gorgeous cover. I love that cover. That one was 1950. And then I bought one of these again. I won it, one in the pack, but I also bought a separate one. So this is a 1 in 25 I paid $13 for. 
So those are super cool. I didn't realize I had that one already. That's what happens. Sometimes when you buy a whole lot at once uh, over like a couple weeks, you end up buying duplicates by mistake. But the cool thing is I'm getting stuff for so cheap that I like this probably 15 to $20. So I actually could make a small profit on it and help pay for the one I kept. Okay, another box we got. Uh, oh, this one is from the Golden Age Guru again. This one was seventy five fifty. So I actually bought a few things this night. And again, I love that he puts his books in a golden bag. It kind of fits his name. So that's amazing. I've met him twice in person. And I always think he's just a fascinating person. Um, oh, and I bought more Ninja Funk. <laughs> but these ones are maybe my favorite Ninja Funk covers. Okay, let me show you what we got. Okay, so we have a uh, Grim. I think it was number one. I got all the... No, it's number six. Uh, limited to 700 pieces. It's a Lee and Hill cover. Uh, it doesn't say on the back, but that was limited. And I paid uh, sixteen fifty. Absolutely love Lee and Hill covers. Uh, looks like the ink he wrote transferred to the bag, so I have to put new bags. Okay, so this is the Ninja Funk. We have a Natalie Sanders Ninja Funk number one. Absolutely love this cover. I think this cover is awesome. Uh, again, Ninja Funk, I don't know. The story might actually suck. I don't know anything about the story. I haven't read it yet. I haven't heard anything amazing about it. What I love about it, though, is it's a series full of amazing artists like uh, David Mack, Tyler Kirkham, Natalie Sanders. So I'm buying them for the gorgeous covers. And I like female characters, so BB's like a cool female character. Uh, this one, what do I pay? Okay, this is an interesting case. This is a case where the trade variant is actually the rare variant. This one is limited to 100. Super low print run. Only 100 of these were made. Uh, this one was 2150. 20 bucks for a limited of 100 seems amazing. With such a beautiful Natalie Sanders cover. And then the, the Virgin variant is actually the more common one. This one, they made a 1000 and this one was $13. And so that was... I paid $5. Is um, It's obnoxious, but again, Ninja Funk... You're not buying Ninja Funk for the, um, for the story. You're buying it for the covers. Because you're like, look how gorgeous these covers are. You're buying this for the covers. You're not buying this because you're, you're reading the storyline. So this is for a whole a different type of collector... Than someone who, you know, 25 is really obnoxious. But they're not 25 stupid covers. They're 25 absolutely stunning, beautiful covers like this. So it's not, you're not, you're not, again, don't collect it. If you don't like the story, don't collect them if you're a story writer. But if you're a Natalie Sanders fan, buy just these beautiful Natalie Sanders covers. These are gorgeous. If you're just a Tyler Kirkham co you know, fan, buy the Tyler Kirkham covers. If you're just a David Mack fan, buy the David Mack covers, right? It's not, you're not buying all of them. I'm buying all of them because I'm a crazy nut like that. But for most people, don't buy 25 covers. Don't buy the covers you don't like. Never buy a comic you don't like just because you feel like you have to be a completionist. Unless you're a completionist like me and you need to have all the covers. I kind of feel that way. But for me, I'm buying these for a great price. A one in like just a hundred of them. This is super rare, right? This is limited for 20 bucks, a beautiful Natalie Sanders cover. I'll buy that all the time. Yeah, these might not be on the list because these ones are super, super leer. These ones might not even been available uh, in general. These might have been just given to like influencers or, or you know, these ones are more rare, hard to get ones. So also Ninja Funk is all about trying to find, it's about the process of collecting, right? So the fun of them is about the collecting. Like these, I couldn't get, from Street Level Hero or from uh, the Spider-Man booth, even though it's their book. These I had to get from the Golden Age Guru, who's, uh, you know, part of Comic Tom's crew. So the only way to get these was to get from someone. So that was process of collecting. Now, the other ones I got that were the metallic and foil ones, that right, these ones right here, right? These ones are amazing Tyler Kirkham ones. This is a metal cover, probably limited to about 100. The cover's a piece of metal printed on. This thing looks fantastic. The process, again, that's what they only, the only way you could get this one, it was in their mystery packs. So again, it was the process of the hunt. Finding this rare thing, you had to win it in one of their ceiling packs. So again, it's the process of the hunt that makes these fun. It's not the process of collecting them so much so again 
don't buy all of them if you don't like them. What I would do is I buy these if you collect, let's say, Spider-Man 1 homages. Or you buy this because you love Tyler Kirkham. Or you buy... Like, there's 38 different ways to collect this. If you want to read just the story, get the regular A cover. You can get that for 4 bucks. Oh, Lars, you appreciate I love collecting single issues. But I also... Earlier in the video, I showed two books that I actually read. That I showed what I like to read. And it's really... Um, you know, there's lots of different ways to enjoy comic books, and I like them in every single way. So I like to share that, and I, I like to just have the conversation, let people know there's all kinds of different ways to enjoy comics. So, there, yes, there's a lot of people that don't like Ninja Funk. They think it's ridiculous. I love the process of the hunt, the gold, the dig, the gold, the hunt. So these were impossible to get. So I actually learned the game to win these mystery packs so that I could get these for the collection. Otherwise, I don't even think you can buy them on eBay. They're so rare that I don't even think there are any for available. So that's the kind of stuff I like to do. I have the fun of the hunt. The hunt is what's exciting. I love the dollar bins, finding amazing treasure for a dollar, or finding rare books in a way that's like impossible to get them. Yeah, Jason, exactly. Oh, oh we're at ads. All right, half an hour, half an hour ads. Mm, ad time. You can catch up. You can... Uh, uh. All right, let me just read everyone. Uh, most variants was probably like Detective 1000. I think they had like 100. Or maybe the Batman Dark Knight one that came out a couple years ago. Uh, uh, with what not... What happens is the first shipping is going to be like 25, 30 bucks. So basically, the first shipping to um to Australia is going to be expensive. But then each additional book after that is like two fifty. So actually, if you buy like ten books, the shipping will be a lot less per book. Um, so I uh, like whatnot. I do like that for international. I have a lot of people buy for me in, uh, um, international because it's a lot cheaper. Yeah, I love finding ratios for the most amazing price. Okay, but yeah, the the um. The hunt for com rare comic books is what I love. The hunt for cheap comic books is what I love. The hunt for expensive comic comic books, but for a dollar, I love. I love the hunt. The hunt for me is like 80% of the joy. And then the other 10% is uh, me sharing it with you guys. And then the final 10% is actually reading them or enjoying them. But actually, the hunt for amazing deals is what I absolutely love. But so, yeah, these covers to me were absolute stunners. Absolutely love these. Yeah, Final Boss. What I like about Final Boss, again, there's a negativity towards this kind of stuff from just the general public because they don't understand why make 50 different covers. What I like about Final Boss is that it's Tyler Kirkham's comic book. What I like about Ninja Funk is it's a comic book created by the, you know, the Spider-Man Booth's owner. What I like about these are they're independent books that are trying to make their own thing and they're having fun with it. And... What I like about that is I like supporting independent. I like create. I like different. I don't want to just see more Spider-Man books. Even though I like Spider-Man, I get sick of seeing Spider-Man books. Every collection, every person, Spider-Man books. Spider-Man, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. You know what's interesting? Uh, Todd McFarlane for Amazing Spider-Man number 300, he made two cover arts for that. He did the, the red with the black, and then Spider-Man 301 was supposed to be a variant. He wanted to do two covers, and Marvel didn't want to pay for two comic, two covers on one comic, so they made it the next one. Wow, that's crazy. So again, if you love Spider-Man and you love the variants, you collect all of those. If you love to just read them, you buy the, the, the A cover. That's the cool thing about having 145 different covers is you don't have to buy all of them. You only buy them if you want. Or if you're someone like me, I want all 145 comics, but I want them for like a dollar. That's I love digging the dollar bins and finding the rare stuff. And indies make the you know make it feel fun and different and unique, and I like that. I like indie stuff, even if it's trash. I will buy Alva Dollar Bins, I'll buy the most goofy indie stuff just because I love it because it's different. It's not boring. It's something new. Exactly. Uh, it gets boring for me just seeing more Miles Morales covers. But I like... Oh, hey, Thomas. I like getting, you know, as many different types of comics as possible because I enjoy the format of comics. I absolutely love them. Uh, okay, what do we got? I think this is a Damn Them All number one. This one was nine fifty for a Virgin Variant. I was getting actually really good prices on stuff from the Golden Age Guru. 
Uh, Gargoyles number one. This one is limited to 1,800 pieces. This one was 850. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it might be one night where I just do a long box of uh, Spider-Man 666. <laughs> Jason, I'll give you a challenge. Collect all Spider-Man 666, but only uh, dollar bins. Hey, King Elmo. I love finding dollar bin ratios and dollar bin rare books. It's like one of my favorite things to do. It's not rare. I mean, it's rare to happen, but it happens. Uh, okay, so that's everything that I got from the Golden Age Guru. That was actually a fun box because we entered into some topics. I like having conversations. When you guys have questions and stuff, it's kind of fun. It kind of unlocks uh, unlocks my brain, and I love unlocking my brain to story time. Okay, I have uh, another Spider-Man booth. I actually I had two Spider-Man booth boxes that just had boring stuff in it, so I decided not to show you guys so you guys don't get bored. I'm trying to keep it a little bit more varied. So it's just more interesting. Okay, but this night I bought two packs, I think. Yeah, I only bought two packs this night. So it's a two-pack night. One was 60, 86 plus shipping and 62 plus shipping. So I know I must have you know, paid more knowing that I thought it was something of value. Uh, so let's do... Uh, let's see. Number 17, I paid 86. Of course. I mean, Jason, at most, there's probably like some $10 ones. I'm assuming most are like 5 bucks. Because the problem is a lot of times they'll do all those variants, but they'll all be like more mass produced and not limited. If it's limited edition of 100 or like 1500, it'll have more value. So the first pack I paid uh, 97 for, that one was actually another ceiling pack. So the ceiling packs are why I buy these. A lot of people will leave comments that are kind of negative, like, why are you buying the trash? I'm not buying the trash. What I, I'm doing is I'm hunting for these ceiling packs because I want the rare stuff. The stuff that I can't get otherwise. So we have a Michael Turner print and this stuff. Again, we have Ninja Funk. But this is a Ninja Funk foil garbage pail kid homage. And I love it. The BB character, she's a doll. Like, I love this cover so much. Uh, the only way you could get this cover, they didn't release this one. It was only in the mystery packs. So that one, I don't know what it's worth because there's none on eBay. This one is super rare. And then you have the foil, which is absolutely gorgeous. And then... Um, in, in any stuff from the 80s, honestly, Thomas, I'll buy all that indie stuff. I love 80s indie. I actually, uh, there's, I was on uh, J.B. Fletcher two nights ago, and uh, I had I live-streamed with him, and I jumped in, and I told him, I want to buy from his uh, dollar bin. Uh, I, I keep all the cheap stuff in my store's basement, and then I try to keep the more expensive stuff uh, at my office. Just I'm afraid one day, if there's ever like a big flood or something... I like I I don't you know if I lose ninety thousand comics I want to be in ninety thousand dollar bin books and not ninety thousand comics of value. Uh, okay, Ninja Funk number one again metal cover, and so these I got duplicates. I'm just gonna hold on to these because these are super rare, and I just I want to keep them rare. And then another final boss, which uh, like I have too many of these as well. <laughs> and then this one is a Fathom Mania special one. It's like a homage to the Turtle Mania. And then I also got a graded book. Yeah, silver and bronze I don't keep in my basement. Silver and bronze and gold I, I have to keep somewhere more, um, you know, climate controlled. Okay, and then this pack also had this uh, Thor number four. Let me pull this back. Thor number four, uh, 9.8, signed by Donny Cates. That is super dope. So for like the $97 I paid for all of that, that was an amazing score. Absolutely. I love when they have the uh, the slabs in the bags because I feel like there's a chance to get some really awesome value. But yeah, I was really happy with that. I thought that was super cool. Okay, I'm going to put this one away. Okay, and then, uh, let's see, pack 13, I paid... This one I paid sixty-seven fifty. I don't know why I paid for that much. Maybe you know what it was. Maybe there was like three packs left, and I was just trying to buy them all until I hit the ceiling pack. So this one I probably overpaid a little bit. So we have Ninja Funk number one, just the regular version of this, signed by JPG. Uh, we have uh, Exosaurus number one, signed by uh, Miko Sorayan. We have a G Ang Power Ranger comic book, which is kind of awesome. And uh, Deathstroke Inc. Really gorgeous cover. Love that one. I love the blue cover color on that one. And then a uh, Star Wars Wars of the Bounty Hunter. Really cool Boba Fett cover. 
So that pack was just like a cheaper pack. I probably overpaid a little bit on that, but the other one was super, super cheap compared to what it was worth. Okay, let me uh, clear these books because we're getting a little bit cluttered here. Yeah, definitely. For 100 bucks, 160 total for the two, I still think I got a really good deal. But again, I'm mostly... Th those packs, I'm trying to either get... Sometimes they'll have amazing, like, super grails as the win. So sometimes I'm trying to get that. Sometimes I'm just trying to get the rare Ninja Funk or other rare stuff is it. Got it. All right, uh, all right, hour 40. Okay, I still have five more smaller boxes. So I think we might be able to hit two hours. We'll try. We're going to try. The goal was two hours tonight. And if you guys trigger some kind of conversation or something you want me to talk about, I can do that. Uh, okay, I got... This is one more pack. I paid 93 for this. So this is from them again. Uh, I have... All the comics are not on the floor. They're all on shelves and uh, milk crates and that kind of thing. My only pro My only fear is if there's like a... Uh, yeah, the Garbage Pail Kid cover is amazing. And I love Garbage Pail Kids. I was 10 years old when they came out, so I'm like the perfect generation for that. That hits me in the feels. But yeah, I'm afraid just like... Not a... Uh, like a few inches of water is fine. Even a foot of water is fine. But um, if I hit like like a major flood where I get like feet of water, then I'm like... I'll lose in comics. Yeah, that exactly. We, you come up with some conversations. I'll chat with you guys. And oh, thank you, King Emma. I had a lot of fun last night's walk. I had that one sketchy moment where the guy threatened to stab me if I put him on YouTube. <laughs> uh, okay, this one I paid eighty two. Was this? I might have just wasted my money on this pack. Honestly, I'm trying to think why I, I paid so much for this one. All right, let's see what's in here. Okay, we have a Ninja Funk one. We have a really fun Marvel Zombies. Yeah, so this was just an overpay. I probably, like, wasted 30 bucks on this one. But that's sometimes what I do is I'll buy one pack, I'll overpay a little bit, and if, like, if I the number doesn't hit or it's not what I thought, I would just, uh, you know, I just don't continue. Because I only like to buy these packs when I think I know what numbers are going to win. Okay. Yeah, I was walking by a uh, dispensary, and there's four guys outside all over the street, and in my head, I was thinking, do I walk to the side of them, or do I walk through them? Like, I didn't know how to walk past them, because it looked kind of uncomfortable. And so as I walked by, the guy's like, uh, uh, he's like, if I show up on YouTube, I'm going to stab you. And then he said, uh, and then he called me the the F word, uh, derogatory, toward, derogatory word towards uh, a gay person. And I was like... <laughs> I was like, I was telling everyone, I'm a, I'm a New Yorker. You, you know what you're doing, that kind of stuff? You walk fast and you get the hell out of there. And, um, but yeah, that's New York. And I was also saying that I don't, I still felt safe just because of so many bars and places that are open that if you ever have someone that's like running after you or chasing, you just run into a crowded place. There's plenty of places to go where you'll have like just people, bodies to um, be there. Yeah, I think he was high. So he wasn't drunk, he was high. <clears throat> <laughs> people were like oh you should put that as the 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 uh like do a short of that <laughs> okay we got one box here from krs comics uh it just looks like a single pack uh three comic books i bought this night yeah jason you slept through the crazy time you know what it was? I was in South Williamsburg. I was going to try to walk over the bridge, and I forgot how to get on the fucking bridge. <laughs> Always know where the bike path is. Always forget where the walking path is. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've been in that situation many times in New York. I'm a New Yorker. I'm used to it. I got I got my Super Raider on and my blinders on. So it's just like, if if you react to someone being like that, you're, you put yourself in danger. If you don't react and you just move quickly out of the situation, you're fine. Okay, we have uh, Savage Spider-Man number one. This is a 1 in 25. And this one was uh, 1250. I mean, I don't understand how someone... I mean, I don't know. Maybe that guy's had a terrible life, and that's why he's like that. Some people just have terrible lives. Um, uh, my life is beautiful. I just I get to spend time looking at comic books. I have a beautiful family. I get to spend time with you guys. I'm enjoying my walk channel so much, just hanging out with you guys for hours on end. Like, I, I have no no uh, hatred like that at all in my heart. I don't care what people are doing. Do whatever you want. If you're enjoying yourself, I am so happy for you. Uh, Daredevil number one. This is a 1 in 50. Uh, Joe Quesada. Very 1850. Awesome. Awesome cover. And uh, this is... A, oh, no. That's the Quesada one. Joe Quesada. 
Uh, so that one was so that was eighteen fifty. This was a Ryan Stegman one in twenty five. That one was ten twenty five. Also, I love Daredevil so much. I really need to collect a lot more modern Daredevil stuff. I feel like I don't collect as much, but I don't see as much. I always see Spider Man stuff. Every collection has Spider Man. I don't, just don't see Daredevil as often. So that was an awesome little pile of comics. Here, I'm gonna have a quick sip. I think after the this stream, I need to eat dinner for half an hour. So it'll probably take me about thirty minutes before I do the walk again. Uh, Black Phoenix, if you can get even a part-time job just so that you can have the joy of comics a couple times a week is cool. Exactly. Some people just... Most people that are terrible people probably had a terrible life, so I feel bad for them. Because most people aren't jerks like that because they're beautiful. They've had wonderful things in their life. It's mostly because everything has been terrible for them to the point where they have to lash out at random strangers just because they're holding a camera or phone while they're walking down the street. <laughs> <laughs> like imagine that you're just like god has a phone i'm gonna stab you like, <laughs> like what the fuck is that <laughs> yeah i uh, i mean i have probably more spider-man just because i buy so many collections and i do like spider-man but i think i like daredevil more than spider-man uh oh this okay this is cool this is from jb fletcher i absolutely love jb he's uh, just a fun person to buy from and so like his stuff sometimes i might overpay a little bit just because I enjoy his show and I want to support him. And, and he does give me lots of great deals too. Yeah, I was just walking by a dispensary and there's like three or four guys out front. And then one guy started uh, like saying like, I'm going to you know hurt me if I, if he gets put on YouTube or something like that. And then he called me the F word for a you know, derogatory term for gay people. And so I just like, <laughs> I wasn't reacting. So I think he was, was trying to get a reaction out of me. But like, I'm not a tourist. I've lived in New York City for, you know, 25 years. Like, that to me, that's Thursday night. It's so different. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I went to, like, this... South Williamsburg is a little bit more sketchier than North Williamsburg. A little bit. But I still, I didn't... Like I said, I didn't feel in danger. I think the guy was just high as a kite and, like, he didn't want to be on camera or something. I have no idea. Okay, let's see. This is a Tiger Division number one. This one was nineteen bucks for the the pair. So it's the Lobos cover. I this character, I think she's cute, and I kind of want to collect all her appearances. So I've been kind of working on those when I see them. So nineteen dollars is not a bad price. It's about retail on those. I think maybe a little bit below it. And then this really cool um, Kill New Gambit set. I thought that was a neat set. i have really become a fan of that artist. I keep saying that, but I keep buying them. Uh, well, that feels very high because you might be able to get $20 a piece on them, but a lot of them are going to be $10. I usually, Marvel Legends, I mean, unless he has some rare ones that are super expensive, but you have to kind of look it up. Yeah, that was last night's walk. Um. Yeah, no, it, it can happen. Just throw your wall at him or, or run into the closest bar. I mean, you know, there's only, there's just try to do the money doesn't matter. Just keep yourself safe. That's all you need to do. Keep yourself safe. Uh, all right. So this uh, gambit set was uh, 15 50 for the pair. Uh, okay. A couple more packages. A couple more packages. I do like gambit. I think he's a fun character. Uh, okay. We have one nerd. Oh, you know what? I didn't grab. Um, yeah, I didn't know you guys. Some of you guys didn't know that you can buy a cold coffee, like a Starbucks from the fridge section of a deli. <laughs> That's fine. But Darren, where are you? You're in um, the Netherlands. I forget. I know you're in Europe, Eastern Europe. No, exactly. I, I I have no problem with people being high. I mean, if you need to have a poor man's vacation because life sucks or you just, you're feeling shitty and you want to feel a little better, I'm, I'm okay with that. That's totally awesome. Just don't be a shitty person. Shitty person is because he had a shitty life, probably. I'm guessing. I mean, I can't imagine someone having a wonderful life of being shitty. Yeah, he felt like he was high, though. He was just like with a group of like three or four dudes just like out of their minds. Oh, Archangel is awesome, too. Okay, so this is Nerds Pharmaceutical. I paid uh, $67.50 for this. Oh, England. Okay, I'm mixing you up with someone else then. I'm so bad at remembering things. I apologize. All right, England. Yes, you're, you're English. 
I got what I need to do is I got to hear your uh, accent. Then I'll get stuck in my head. Uh, okay, we got um, Amazing Spider Man. Uh, I forget which one. It's either nineteen or twenty, but each of these sets were uh, twenty two fifty. Exactly. I take. I don't like THC because I don't really like getting kind of uh, paranoid. But I take CBD every day. It really just knocks my anxiety away. Without the CBD, I'd be a mess. Yeah, I, I really don't know what that guy was on or, or what was going on. He was, but I mean, exactly. I like it was. I don't know. It was confusing. Maybe he was on some kind of like Delta Eight or some other weird weed like substance, but not actually weed. Uh, or maybe he was on a lot and really paranoid. Some people get really paranoid. Um, okay, so we have uh, two beautiful Spider Gwen covers. Absolutely gorgeous. Twenty two fifty. So I pretty much played. Um, um, what would you call? It? Paid retail on these, but I wanted them. There were new releases at the time, and then I bought this one. Also, the pair was uh, twenty two fifty, which I love David Nakayama cover so much. So I try to collect everything he does whenever I see it. Gorgeous comics, absolutely love those. And then we have a um, Sabine Rich twenty two fifty for the pair. Again, also love Sabine Rich. Awesome black cat cover. So those are amazing. And the reason why I bought all these out of the bite now is because I won this Miles Morales number four. I think that's uh, maybe a GN cover. No, it's a uh, it's, um, Dark 2 cover. Dark 2 cover. New York is a melting pot of every type of person ever. And I think we saw all of them last night. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Some people are just terrible people. But again... A lot of times, the most terrible people are people that had terrible lives. So I feel bad for them. I don't get really mad at them. It just, it is a thing. Um, yeah, so this one was, so I won this awesome Dark 2 book. So because of that, I decided just to buy out of a, um, you know, the buy it now. Just a couple of my favorite artists, all new releases. Yeah, DNA is amazing. And he's so nice. I've met him three or four times now. And every time I meet him at Comic-Con, he's just very, very pleasant to talk to. One of my favorite artists. All around favorite artists. Uh, okay, one more box. One more box and then we are unboxed for the night. And then uh, we'll do it again tomorrow because I have another like two hauls worth. Oh, I do have. Okay, I have one Comic Traders box. And... Um... Oh, sweet. What book is it going to be? I'm, I'm really excited. Uh, so this is Comic Traders. I paid $60.50 for this box. Uh, so we have more Josh Burns. I'm, I can't remember if I got this set or not last night. Like I might accidentally bought these. Uh, uh my super team. Um, let's see if we're talking DC universe. I mean, I obviously I want Batman because Batman has all the money and connections, but he's shit against super powerful things. And you need Superman. Of course you need, you just need the justice league. <laughs> like, you got Wonder Woman. You got, uh, you know, I don't know. And then DC. Uh, I mean, Marvel's hard because all the Marvel people have flaws. So it's like, I would like Wolverine, but he, you know, he's got some issues. Uh, Pop Walks is my own, new YouTube channel. It's just called Pop Walks. And there's a link to it on uh, in this video's description. So you can follow. You can just click on it and follow. And, uh, yeah, I have at least two more days of books. And then on Saturday, I got it's free comic book day. So I'm going to have to figure out how to do my, I just woke up. So my sleep is like, it's cycling through. So the next few days are going to be struggling for me. Cause I still want to do these night time, but I might have to force it. I might miss one day just until I, uh, get it. Oh, I mean, that's a cool book. That, that's a book I get often. <laughs> Tom, I have like 20 of those, I think. <laughs> uh, okay, so we have this beautiful Josh Burns, uh, Vampirella. It's a two-pack, I think. Maybe, yeah, it was just the two-pack. So what was the two-pack? The two-pack was... Oops, that's not... Here's the invoice. I got the wrong invoice. Thank you, KJ. Uh, this two-pack was... Is this... This is $21. $21. Great price. So like $23.50 probably with shipping. I really like Joshua Burr. His stuff is really... Like he just does the cutest face. They're like sexy girls. 
I really like his artwork. I've become a fan of his. And then this awesome Rose Besh uh, Spidey uh, Miles Morales cover. That one was uh, a single book for eight bucks, so maybe ten with shipping. Absolutely love that. Uh, and then we have Frank Frazetta's Dawn Attack. So this was a whole set, I think. Yeah, this is a whole set of these. I thought the covers looked really awesome on these. So here we'll just we'll go through all the covers. So we have Dawn Attack number one. Virgin and trade. Yeah, I have fun every night. I just tell stories. Sometimes it's my comic story. Sometimes it's just whatever we see on the street. Sometimes it's craziness. Sometimes I just answer people's questions. The wall, it's just, it's a way. I'm trying to get my 10,000 steps each night, and I just love hanging out with you guys. That's crazy, Tom. Yeah, and in, in uh, New York City, they're so common. I get them like every other week. <laughs> so when you say we are comic, I'm like, that's rare. But I'm assuming in Argentina, a lot of stuff is rare. Uh, okay, so this whole pack of five bucks was $23, I believe. So yeah, that was an awesome painted cover. I think that's... Um, one of these might be Frazetta's daughter did the cover. And then there's a couple other artists. Not 100% sure on these. But I thought those were super cool. Oh, and then you know what it was? That night, I actually won this issue. This issue is for free. Uh, awesome. I think that's her first appearance. Awesome Rico cover. Love that cover. So because it was free, I decided to buy a few other things since the cheaper shipping was unlocked. When I get cheaper shipping, I do like to buy more stuff. Uh, okay, I think that's everything I had to show you guys tonight. You guys have any questions? We got four more minutes. Four minutes. I could open up a comic book or... Uh, oh, I got stacks everywhere. I got to organize... That's the one thing. After I get uh, back from the walk, I have to come back to the shop and organize down here and then figure out what I need to bring to the office. Just because I don't like leaving anything of value in the shop. Okay. Uh, scooch these, scooch these. Okay. Uh, I don't know. We can... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, Tom. I have to figure that out because my... Uh, my... Sleep, again, is cycling through. It cycles through every day. I went to bed at, like, 11. I woke up at uh, 7. So I get my 8 hours a day. It just, it's usually, like, an hour or two later each day. Sometimes it's a little bit earlier, and then I sleep too much. Or it's a little bit later, and I sleep not enough. It's, I just I can't regulate my sleep. It's just one of those things that my brain does. And because of that, I, uh, I just go with the flow and do the best I can. Um... What should I talk about on the walk tonight? What, what are some good topics? I like having some topics to talk about. I mean, I still have to tell the comic story from 2000 on. Maybe I'll do that tonight. You guys want me to continue part three of the comic and store story? Because we ended off a couple nights ago where I was uh, just depressed trying to get my shop open. So yeah, uh, maybe that's what I'll do tonight. I'll see. I'm really tired, though. I actually, I have to go eat something as well. Okay, you know what? I think I'm going to end the stream here. I'm going to go get something to eat. Um, in half an hour or so, I'll start the walk, I believe. What time is it? Yeah, 10 o'clock. Yeah, half an hour. That way, it'll give me enough time to get my steps in. Okay, let me get the camera flipped. Uh, okay. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Thank you so much for hanging out with me with comics. Comics are fun. Comics are something I think about all the time, so it's fun. Think about comics, talk about comics with you guys, and I'll see you guys pretty soon. Like half an hour or so. Okay. Bye. No, Jay.